First of all, I like this place. I like, uh, you know, everything here. There's some really lovely little businesses popping up. I think it's it's there's positive changes happening in Beeston. Don't think that we can find in another place in Nottingham. It's a tolerant, modern little town, really. It made me feel very, very lucky to be here and part of this this place. The life in, in Beeston, it's a, a life that you have a, a good quality because you have a lot of options uh, regarding to the transport system, tram nowadays, a lot of nurseries. Uh, we want to start families here because it is a modern town. Um, it's an open town, it's a friendly town, it's, it's got good facilities, it feels it's on the way up, it, it's, it's young, it's supportive and it's, it's close to what, everything you need. You know, it's close to the city in one way and the countryside the other way, so uh, it, it's pedestrianised, <laughs> which is great when you've got kids like mine, which uh, has a tendency to run off all the time. So, so yeah, it's, it's very good for, good for families here. Beeston has a huge sort of parenting community, I don't want to leave the dads out either, parenting community. <laughs> Um, and I started making little samples, little sort of uh, hats, bibs, you know, small things to start with and showing them at the local baby groups that I was going to with my newborn. Um, and it just took off from there really. Um, it kind of was growing quicker than I wanted it to to start with. People at the baby groups were saying, oh, can I order this, can I order this? And I was like, oh God, okay. So I'd go home <laughs> with my baby and I'd be sat at the sewing machine breastfeeding, sewing, one-handed, <laughs> making these orders, ready to take to the baby group the, ne the following week. Um, and then it kind of just escalated. And I thought, I've got to, I've got to grow this because this, you know, I can't ignore the, the demand. And then, so that's how it started. And then I had my second and was sat again. It was like Groundhog Day. I was like breastfeeding at the sewing machine again. <laughs> but I thought, I've got to do this. You know, I can't not do this because it's got, I could tell it's got legs and people want it and people are ordering. So let's just go with it. It just started, a cafe would open and then a, some kind of artist shop would open. And that started going. And then also the other side near, um, is it Broadgate Park? Or mm -hmm. like the, all the kind of Asian places that were opening, Korea House and things like that. I'm surprised, I think, yeah, I think it's constantly evolving. I'm down by the canal and yeah, I, I don't feel like it's a stagnant, it's a, you know, the high road, like anywhere, there's a lot of charity shops because they don't pay business rates and the business rates are high, so it's like anywhere, you know, you're not gonna get incredible independent shops on the high road unless the council would do something about it. <laughs> so uh, so you can understand it. But I think some places maybe would have stayed stagnant because of that. I think here we have a lot of people that are very um, motivated. A lot of women that are very motivated. There's a lot of female business owners and they just find other ways. So yeah, so that's why I'm here on Woolerton Road and a lot are on Chilwa Road and a lot of the other end. It's, you know, it's just finding a way around it and... Yeah, there's a, definitely a lot of incredible talent here in Beeston and headstrong women, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> in 2018, we launched the idea of bringing street art to Beeston with a festival in June. When I first moved here in the 90s, I was a postman uh, and I worked at the Royal Mail and that was a big industry at the time. You had Boots, which was a big industry, you had uh, uh, Plessy and Siemens, it was the Marconi, which were big industries around here. And they've all gone over time. They've, um, well, but, you know, Boots is still there just about. And the Royal Mail is there, that's privatised now. But uh, a lot of the big industry is gone. So a lot of the people who were here for that type of work you know, aren't here anymore. So what, what has happened is the university, while well, they've shrunk, the university's grown massive and be, become really big. And in, it's brought that type of people. And so it has changed, the, it's made it younger. It's made it, um, it's made it more mixed, I think. Um, it's, I mean, I'm from around here. My wife is uh, is from Kent originally, and she moved up here again for her studies, to do a PhD and stuff. So, I think we we exemplify um, 
what Easton's about a lot of the time. It's a mixture of the old and the people who've been here, long, you know, families who've lived here for years, and then new people who come in here and you know keep it sparky, keep it going, and, and you know we mix well. I mean, I'm married here, so we must mix well. <laughs> so, you know, I think that idea of a place has a voice and it, 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 it has its own uh, vernacular, and trying to get that report the change of a life thing and uh, you know report where life is and uh, yeah it's great fun to do that. Uh, I've been writing about Beeston for 10 in various forms. Matt James is this do a doctor at the university, professor at the university, uh, who's a friend of a long-term friend of mine um, who, who read the blog and stuff he said to me shall we start shall we put this to print and I went yeah what well, and let's start a magazine up uh, at the time when most magazines are going under <laughs> and print is dying. Let's start one up, because that's a great business model. I, I think um, we thought when we started the magazine, we'd probably get five issues and then we'd run out of stories and that'd be enough. But gradually, as we kept publishing, we are coming out every month at the time, um, people started getting in touch and saying, I'd like to advertise. I don't know how to do it, I'll find out. I did find out. I'd like to print you. I'd like to, you know, I can do, I can print you for two, great. I'd like to write for you. Wow, okay, great. I've got stories for you, even better. And we just started building up and now we're about 30 people uh, who dip in and out in the magazine uh, at various points. Um, some are more involved than others. Um, um, we pay some of them now as well, which is quite gratifying. Um, now, at the end of every issue, my designer goes, Matt, there's too much stuff. <laughs> so it's... Uh, it, it, it's, um, it, it's a great problem to have, but there is so much stuff to write about, there's so much stuff going on. It's changed a lot, and yeah, but from very humble beginnings and very ignorant beginnings <laughs> into to something. I'm a bit wiser now with these things, but uh, probably not wise enough still. You're always learning. <laughs> Back in Greece, we had for 25 years our baking. I took it for my father, and I grow it. We woke up every day at uh, four o'clock in the morning. We start to prepare our food. Big pies, food, yes. sweet, dessert. Yeah. I'm good to eat. I'm very good to eat. We eat everything. You <laughs> see? We taste everything before we serve yeah. people. This is your job. Yeah. <laughs> we have to hold ourselves. When we make something new. As we must make it, taste it, and mm, it's good. Or nice, neat, little walls, salt, little bit more. Something else, so, you, see? you know. Give a good job. Yeah. yeah and we, we can we can choose something for yeah. this. Uh, I, for us, everything is perfect. But people have to choose which is better. Okay. That's why we have so many. We have a lot of vegetarian and vegan as well because we are fasting. I bring you spanakopita, spinach pie. We serve it with salad and coleslaw. I said, I know what I want to do. I want to go and study food. I want to do catering. And uh, I said, but I'm vegetarian. I went to Leeds and I read about this woman and she was called Hansa Dabby. I thought she is the person who has, I know, she's had no training at all and he has this successful restaurant and I need to know how she did it. So I went there and I come in and she's just like, no, you can't have a job. <laughs> and so I just went all, I kept coming, oh please, just one night, one night, I'll come and work for you, I just want to, but no, no. Anyway, after a while she said, okay, one night a week. And then we became best friends and then I worked every night and we went to India together and she is, she's an inspiration. And so I thought, well, maybe I can do it. And then I, I went to Italy and I approached Hillary. And so I rented her cafe, it sat 13 people. And I rented it in the evenings. And I thought maybe it would last one month. No one would come because it's vegetarian food and everyone would think I was crazy. And uh, yeah, it started and it carried on, it continued. And without Hillary, I, I wouldn't be here because I was there for two years and I established myself and then I was able to rent a bigger premises, which is the one we have now in Willington Road. Yeah. Right, so this is where it all begins. We're just cutting out a rainbow double knot hat. Just finishing cutting out the band. We've got our own handmade range that is made here. 
Uh, we also stop other local, the work of other local mums. So we like to support the creative community. So then I thought, why not, you know, showcase theirs as well? And they're all mums. And I never, it, I, I never intended it to be all mums to start with. It was just creatives. But there are so many mums out there trying to start their own creative business so they don't have to go back to work after having a little one um, and so it just it was just it was easy to, to fill the shot in fact I'm con I'm having to turn people away because I am constantly being asked by mums who've got beautiful products can we stop it in here and I'm, and I'm full to capacity <laughs> right now it, it, it just goes to show how creative you know how many creatives there are out there so so I'm supporting it it's becoming more creative, actually, I would say, because Beeston is a creative place anyway, but it's almost like Beeston people are embracing that and running with it and making it even more creative. It's also very Beeston that it's people that have done this. You know, it's people that it's grassroots. It's, a, it's not someone that's come in and said, this is what we'll do with this, this town. So, yeah, it's great. I think uh, Beeston people are... Uh, should be given credit for the fact that we, we do make changes and we, we do... You know, if, if someone doesn't give it to you, know, someone's not providing it, we step in and do it ourselves. We have a lot of, of the people that are from the university because it's close to the main campus. And these um, give you at least this feeling that is a really multicultural uh, society. We have a lot of students around and, and so be a bit more open for the uh, people that come from around the world. I didn't feel any kind of racism mm -hmm. or something like that against us. And sometimes I am wondering that this could be because we are living places that have this um, multicultural acceptance uh, stronger than in another place. It's very good people here. Yes. Very good people, uh, very kind. They love us. They hang with us. You know, when we open, they are very, very friendly. And they tell us, welcome to our community, to our, to this town. It's very good. Uh, when they hit, uh, we open the Greek. We are Greek, food. yeah. Yes, we are Greek. They accept us yeah. much, much better. Yeah. Uh, customers uh, getting in our shop with smile on their face. You know, uh, we, we love to, 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 to see that. It's, I think it, it's uh, the most, the, the most, the biggest award for us to to to, to sell things that people love. To, to Here it's a little bit more difficult because I'm in the kitchen in the back and you know the names but not always the faces of the customers but it's so nice when I do get to sometimes come out especially if you, you don't know in the kitchen if people are enjoying it and then if you come out and you see people smiling or they say like a little compliment to you oh it's like you know you feel like your heart's bursting every day. <laughs> But yeah, I would say ultimately that, that sense of community that you were talking about, that here I, I found very strong. And I've lived in a lot of other places and this, is, this is a, has a good sense of community, for sure. It's that sense of like, again, without Hillary I wouldn't be here, but without those customers that I wouldn't be here. And the constant support of, of local people, giving you support verbally, but also just coming in and, and eating over and over again and I don't think they realise how key that is to us, you know, because we wouldn't survive obviously without without them. And there's so much pleasure we take in in seeing the same faces come back and enjoy the same things and and different things and the experiences we share with the customers is is incredible really. They they make the restaurant. Mm. And community. Community. I think of community, I think of food. And you're right, I don't think of food from Beeston. I think of all the people in Beeston that come from all over the world that have said, let me come one morning, I'll teach you how to make chapatis. Or, you know, let me come, this lady up the road, she makes the best samosas, I'll bring you some samosas. Or, you know, it's not 
it's not Beeston food, it's just the community in Beeston sharing, well for me, sharing food. <laughs> <laughs> Pistachio, walnuts, all together with spices and we bake it. And also we put You look so proud. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Someone decided to bring the idea to Beeston, uh, bring the idea of the Charity Music Festival here. And um, they asked me um, just before the first one if I'd like to get involved because I started up the magazine at that point. And I went, yeah, go on. And then it did okay. It didn't do really brilliantly. Made £5,000, I think, about that much, which is great, you know. But, um, but I just thought, well, there's potential here. So I worked with it, and um, there's lots of changes in personnel and everything and how we did it. Um, and I eventually, when I eventually left, it took um, £17.5 thousand pounds or something, which is a record, not just in Beeston. It was a record of all the festivals, all the uh, auction festivals that are held all around the country. So that's bigger than Liverpool and Manchester and Bristol and, um, and Glasgow and uh, Edinburgh and Newcastle and Leeds. It, uh, all of those, we did better than them. And we're a tiny, you know, we're a comparatively minnow compared to these big cities. We did better than Birmingham. I mean, Birmingham's the second biggest city in the, uh, in the country, and we beat them in Beeston. So, um, yeah, that, that's good. I, I laughed at that point because I thought it's time to hand it over to people, and, you know, I, I'd done as much as I thought I could take it, and I handed it over, and then the people who took it over, Last year, when they did it, they raised twenty-two and a half thousand pounds, which beat their own record. And yeah, and it's, it, it, it does say a lot. Um, it, it is a really good way to illustrate how generous Beeston is, how it likes to be involved, and how it likes a good time. Because you know, this is really people going out and spending money and giving money away. So, so yeah, so it's a fantastic thing. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud to have been part. Everybody that I've spoken to, the other businesses, we all support each other. We're all sort of like, we, we have a, a, a business networking page and we we communicate, I'll pop over and see the other businesses, how are you getting on, how are you doing, have you had a busy week and we'll, we'll share each other's things online and get and, and recommend them to other people. So so yeah, I think it's 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 a good business sort of networking community as well, I think. We don't all work independently. We all try as much as we can when we're stuck in our own um, spaces. It, as much as we can, we try and get out and, and sort of sort of network a little bit. So that's yeah, that's lovely. I think the businesses that are popping up up and down Chilwell Road are, are fabulous. They're all independent. They're all relatively creative, and I just think it's making the street um, a, a, a lovely place to be and to and to, to stroll down. And we are so happy to be here. Very, very happy to be here. Listen, I think it's, as I said before, it's a beautiful place and so wonderful people. They accept us with open hands. We love to hear. We appreciate that. We feel grateful for that. Hey, I'm quite optimistic. I've lived in places where there isn't that sense. I mean, you did. Yeah, it's, it, it, you know, you can live in a place, but it doesn't, you can have a house in a place, but it's only a home when you've got other people around you. If you're part of a community, that's something that's a very special feeling, especially if you don't have a big family, or if, for example, a lot of the staff I work here with now, they have families in, in other places, you don't have to have your family around you, but if you've got that sense of community, that's something very special. And I think, for me, I, I'm not maybe as involved as I would like to be with community things because I'm so busy here, but for me, I get a good sense of community or that kind of fe feeling when I'm feeding people. You know, I don't live just me and Patrick. I live, we have a housemate and his girlfriend stays and we often have people in the spare room and I just like a lot of people together and feeding those people. That's my favourite thing. And I think here, at night time, I come around and you get all these different tables and usually here they all know each other. <laughs> and it's so nice, that feeling that, yeah, that just, I don't know, we're all connected, aren't we?
Thank mm -hmm. you.